For everybody out there, uh, welcome and thank you so much for being here. My name is Hector Verdugo. I'm the Senior Vice President of Admissions here at Academy of Art University here in San Francisco, California, USA. Uh, once again, thank you all so much for spending your time with us tonight. I see people from all over the U.S. Uh, try to do some shout outs for different countries and cities and things like that. But uh, all we wanted to do is just start off with just saying a big thank you for spending your evening with us. We put together a special workshop with a lot of talented people tonight. So what we want to do is have a lot of fun, take a lot of questions, make sure that you learn more about our program here. Uh, and we try to kind of get the most out of this. The more that you interact, the better. So, but welcome tonight as actors and directors, secrets to a successful scenes. Um, super excited to have you all. Before we get started, I just wanted to address a couple of things. First thing is that we do record these events and a copy of the recording is emailed to every single student the next day. So don't worry about it. You will get a copy of this. We want to make sure that everybody has a copy to access. That's number one. Second thing, I've said it like 10 times already, but just make sure that you're adjusting to all panelists and attendees. Unfortunately, we cannot hear you, but our best way to interact with you is to take your questions during the chat. And we're going to do our best to try to get to all of your questions as well. The next thing I want to do is for any of you who have ever uh, attended these workshops before, or maybe this is your first time, we generally do these on Tuesday nights and we focus on different areas and topics. If anybody's interested in checking out some of our events, I'm just gonna throw a link in there so you can check out some of the upcoming events. Uh, next Tuesday, we're gonna be having an event on how to make your own podcast. Uh, so uh, it's gonna be really cool. It doesn't matter if that's your major or not. Some, I have a lot of people that are just regulars that come on by and they check out different events just to hang out and, and learn something new. So please feel free to check that out. And if that event is not your jam, then you can go ahead and check out this link for all the different upcoming events. It's on a calendar format. So you just click on that button and you'll see a bunch of different events that we have lined up and there's always more events being added. So as we get started tonight, we have a lot of people here tonight to make this a fun event. So I'll be here, your host in the chat tonight. I'm gonna to introduce a couple of people before we get started. Uh, joining us tonight will be Melissa Seidman. She's the Dean of our Schools of Entertainment at Academy of Art University. She's also the casting director for our film school. Melissa trained as an actor at American Conservatory Theater and earned degrees from Princeton University and Oxford University, where she was a Rhodes Scholar. At Academy here, Melissa teaches acting and camera for script analysis. We also have Jenna Memmel, and Jenna is going to be our main host here tonight. She is the executive director of the School of, I'm sorry, she's the executive director of entertainment schools here at Academy of Art University and an Oscar AKA Academy Award winning producer and writer. Uh, Jenna is also showing off her Oscar there right next to her. So please uh, feel free to take a look at that. She's produced over 25 movies and over 65 half hour live action shorts that have played as television series in more than 30 different countries. The films, have been produ ha the films she's produced have won Writers Guild and Directors Guild Awards, Emmys, Cable Ace Awards and Humanitas Prize. So I'm going to go ahead and pass this over to Jana here. I'm going to be your host and I'll be in the chat to take your questions. I look forward to you guys having a good time tonight. All right, here you go, Jana. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Um, I'm going to do the little intro to our schools. I'm going to try to make this 10 minutes long. Don't leave us because there's going to be tons of acting and directing after this. So first, um, I want to show you a little reel um, so you can see the kind of work we do. This is um, a composite reel of films directed by and starring our students, and it's just tiny little snippets from the last year or so. Show me some potential, baby. You gotta show me what you got. Man, hell no, nah, man. Time to try something, dog. Let's make it happen.
in it. I know what I'm doing. You stop making these people our enemy. Is that shit yours? It's my stone. I came to see what is left of it. Stop fucking lying. Who's this? Who is it, woman? It's my brother. And where is he? I swear to God, I'm gonna fucking shoot you. Private, stand down. Where is he? Just... I never kissed anybody before. <laughs> it's, a, it's not funny. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Because I am a great teacher. So. For Christina. Hello. Uh, we got 1068 Parada, right? Yeah, that's right, honey. Okay. Could uh, could you put that out? Give me a break, honey. It's almost finished. Just roll down the window. So again, those were all directed and starring our students. So if you join us in the motion picture school for the first three semesters, you're gonna take a menu of classes. So even though you come in here knowing you might wanna be something, we're gonna make sure you see how the entire business works. So from cinematic storytelling, which is a beginning filmmaker, to cinematography, to production design, to directing, to principles, to writing, you're gonna to get to see how every single discipline works. Then at the end of that, you're gonna go into a class called Scene Production Laboratory where you put it all together. And every student in this class writes, produces, and directs a scene. So you get to see which skill you really like. And when you're directing, you have an entire crew working under you in your third semester of school. So pretty cool. Um, at the end of this ex experience, and those are the films you just saw clips of, you're gonna take a thesis class. And in this year long class, you're gonna get the skills and, and direct if you're a director, produce if you're a producer, and write if you're a writer, a 20 to 30 minute festival worthy film. And those are the things you just saw. All of those films have played in film festivals around the world. Um, if you are more into doing reality and action kind of stuff, we do Production Hub. Production Hub, as you can see, works for the fire department, the Coast Guard, uh, the Forest Service, the Film Commission. Um, we make commercials that air around the world. And here as a student, you will be making this film. Um, every summer, including last summer and this summer, we do a web series that, was, that is written by students. And for all of you out there who are at AAU, no matter what department you're in, you can come and be in the web series and experience what it's like to actually make a show. Um, we have five working sound stages. The meaning of that for actors is you are acting on a sound stage just like you would be doing in Hollywood. And for directors, you're working with full crews on these sound stages. And even during COVID last semester, we shot four films on the sound stages. Um, we, from the first day you're in this school, whether you're an actor or whether you're a cinematographer or whether you're a graphic artist, if you wanna come and volunteer on our shoots, we will take you and give you filmmaking experience. Um, if you're here for the acting program, in the first three semesters, you're gonna get a great menu of acting. You're gonna do improv, you're gonna do physical acting, you're gonna do voice and speech, you're gonna do some Meisner. You're also gonna study character and backstory, um, and you are mostly gonna learn to act on camera because the foundation of our acting program is teaching you how to be an actor on camera. And we're gonna shoot you on our film stages all the time. Um, and because of that, when you leave here, you're gonna have a reel of your work, which is 
as competitive as any professional actor's reel, to be able to go out right away and show your work. Um, we also shoot over 300 projects a semester here on our sound stages for the directing programs. And we pay our student actors, uh, Laura and Caleb, who you're gonna meet soon, have been in a lot of these. We pay our student actors to be in these films. So you're getting paid as an actor while you're in school. Um, we have a film festival every year that's live streamed around the world that's judged by working professionals. And in fact, this year we had the head of casting at ABC Disney was one of our judges. And a result, as a result of being a next up and her seeing your, their work, she called three of our students in to come and read for the lead in an ABC Disney pilot. So we're giving you exposure as professionals, again, in school. Um, we have a theater program. We do nine world premieres every semester. Laura was in them this semester. I think Caleb, you were in them last semester. And these world premiere one acts are directed by working Bay Area professional theater directors. Um, and these are just stills from those plays. Um, and in the School of Writing, um, we have a full writing curriculum where you're writing TV features, web series, and short form television. So in all of our schools, we're working together to create the best material. Now this summer, we're going to do our summer acting and filmmaking intensive five days a week for seven and a half weeks, about seven hours a day. If you are out graduated from high school or in your first year, at the end of your first year at AAU, you can come and be in the intensive. It will be a hybrid online on-site experience where you will act, write, direct, and shoot. And it's, it's incredibly cool and enormous amounts of fun. Um, we have a lot of social media going on here. You can follow me, you can follow the school on Instagram, you can comment. We're going to have new uploads three, four, five, ten times a week. So please join us on our social media. This will be on the recording. Um, and now I am handing this over to Ms. Seidman. Hello. So uh, welcome to uh, the secrets of great scenes. I would like to introduce three of those secrets right now. So you always want to have a really good director, really good actors, and a really good script. So we have all that tonight. Um, Tracy Ward, uh, who is one of the instructors at the Academy of Art, has been directing for over 30 years. She earned her MFA from UCLA, the School of Theater, Film, and Television. And at the Academy, she teaches uh, directors rehearsing actors and organic blocking for actors. And she also teaches directing actors for film and television. Uh, in addition to that, um, she also directs theater. She's quite well known in the Bay Area and she specializes in new plays and new uh, playwrights. And our actors today are Caleb Stewart, who is an actor in our MFA program. I have had the pleasure to train him. He is wonderful, as you will see. And Lara Flippa, who also is, she's in our BFA program. I've also had the great pleasure to train her. Um, they, the three, this is our creative team tonight, uh, they are going to be working on a script by Tamara Jenkins. It's from a screenplay called The Savages. So I'm just going to quickly tell you what it is. The scenes are in the chat if you would like to look at them. You do not have to look at them. You can just listen because the actors are going to read through. And then Tracy's going to talk a little bit about how she prepares the scene as the director. And then Caleb and Laura will talk just briefly that answer your questions about how they prepared the script as actors. Um, that really is the secret to a successful screen, a lot as to a successful scene is preparation, understanding that it's not just saying the lines on the page. It's really discovering what the story is really about, what the relationship dynamics are, what the arc of the story is, how each character changes, how they feel about each other and what's going on why it matters to them. So Tracy's gonna be directing for all those things. We're gonna look at two related scenes from The Savages. So this is a story of 
uh, two siblings, sister and a brother. Lara is playing Wendy. Um, Wendy uh, has aspirations to be a playwright. I'm sorry to say, Lara, that so far you have not succeeded in this goal as Wendy. So you were working largely as a temp in New York City and um, you feel that your life is not particularly settled. You're having an affair with a married man, which I'm not that excited about. So things aren't really turning out for you as you wished. Uh, your brother, who's gonna be played by Caleb, um, that character's name is John. John is an English professor. Um, he writes about theater and specifically the German playwright Bertolt Brecht. Um, he's, I'm not gonna comment on him. I'm not making any creative choices here. I'm just telling you the story. So, so the screenplay is kicked off uh, when their father becomes unable to care for himself any longer. His girlfriend calls these two guys and says, you have to come deal with your father. So basically they don't have much of a relationship as adults, they're not close. From the minute they both arrive in town, um, they are in conflict about what to do with their father. So Caleb would like to put their father in a nursing home where he can be cared for, uh, John. And Laura playing Wendy uh, does not want that. And so these two scenes that we're about to look at um, are related to this, uh, you will see, because by the time these scenes happen, these two are fed up with each other, particularly John with Wendy. Um, so the two scenes are called um, Guggenheim and FEMA. Again, you don't have to read them, but if you wish to, they're in the chat. Just two things you should know. Um, Guggenheim is a very, very prestigious award given to the very top creative artists around the world and it comes with a financial a subsidy for that artist to do their work for a year. And then FEMA, which we'll come to a little bit later, is the Federal Emergency uh, Management Agency and they go in in cases of disaster. Uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Tracy now and she's gonna lead the actors through, I believe a table read, then they'll probably talk a little bit about how they prepared and then they'll go right into rehearsal and then they'll go to the second scene. So have fun. Great, thanks. Hi, you guys. Hi, I'm excited to work with you on this. I love this script and um, I love this relationship. I, I have a couple of brothers of my own, so I think that's part of what I understand and love about it. Anyway, um, so let's, let's actually do a read. Um, let's just read the first scene, Guggenheim. And um, you know where it's starting and where it's ending. It's, I need you to spend Thanksgiving with dad is where it starts, Kayla. And then um, I think on the page 63, Laura, oh my God, that's amazing. See at the bottom of the page there. Wendy has one more line, which is um, after he says, I'm proud of you, she says, yeah. <laughs> so let's just read and see what we got. Okay. Are we working, I'm sorry, are we working off of the ones that, uh, that Melissa sent us? Yes, yeah. Okay. So Kayla Bites, it's the most recent one that I sent you. Got it. This evening. Yeah. Got it, sorry. You got it? No, it starts with, I need you to spend Thanksgiving with dad. Okay, that's not the one that yeah. I have. Technical but We'll get it. Um, I got it. I, I've got it from another class. That's okay. I sent um, it to you, so it should be in your uh, email account, guys, if you don't have it up. Um, I, I just want to say, while. Well, while they're grabbing this, I'll just pop on for a second. I'm also gonna be answering people's questions in the chat. And then you could, you'll also have an opportunity to directly ask Laura and you know through the chat uh, questions that they can answer as well. But right now while they're working together, I will answer your questions for you. Do you see Anna Caleb? Uh, yeah, I got it. Okay, and Laura, you have it? Yeah, I do. Awesome. Okay, okay. let's begin. I need you to spend Thanksgiving with dad. We're not going to do it together. It's my only time to get away for research. Okay, well, I have things I have to do. Like what? Like my life, for instance, in New York City. Well, maybe it's time for you to stop being so self involved and. Think about somebody else's life for a change. 
Oh, 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 like you, who can put his book aside for one. I've got to get this thing finished, Wendy. My editor thinks it's a good time for it. Okay, yeah. Oh, you're breaking up just a little bit, uh, Laura. Still frozen. Yeah. Um, talk now. Let's see how you're doing. Um, I heard everyone's really itching for a book about Bertolt Brecht this season. Wendy, I'm working. Okay, I am working. I know you are, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's just, I got a lot writing on this book and your life is much more portable than mine. Lord's frozen Oh, darn it. Uh, Laura's frozen again, and I don't know when. Melissa, can you jump in and maybe read the part Laura was supposed to be reading? That'd be great. I know you are. I'm sorry. Yeah. What's up? Yeah. Uh, which line are we on? What's that supposed to mean? Okay. Actually, let's go back and just have him give you that line. I know you are. Uh, Caleb, okay. Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, Tracy, can you just tell me the page? 62. No, sorry, I'm on the... So it's, I know you are. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We're starting there. Yeah, if you could just feed me that line, that's great. I'm with you. Okay, great. I know you are. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just, I got a lot writing on this book and your life is a lot more portable than mine. Mm -hmm. So what's that supposed to mean? Like a toilet? No, like a body? <laughs> no, I am just saying that you don't have a job job. I have obligations. You're freelance. Couldn't you just hook up with a temp agency down here or something? Um, actually, John, I'm being funded uh, right now to work on my plays and, you know, Maybe that sounds a little, I don't know, self-involved, but I also have an obligation to a prestigious foundation that has put a lot of faith in me and frankly has given me a lot more support than he ever has. You got it. What? The Guggenheim. Yeah. Really? Yeah, really. Why do you sound so surprised? I'm, I'm, I'm not. It's just a really hard thing to get is all. I've applied half a dozen times and I never well, got one. Okay, well, I did. Okay, and so did like 200 other something people who were considered, you know, promising in their field or whatever. Why can't you just be happy for me? I am. I am. It's great. They must have a whole different set of criteria for playwrights. You know what, they like my work, John, okay? Okay, they think I'm good. Is that so hard for you to believe? I believe it. I just can't believe you've been keeping it a secret. I just found out. Just now? <laughs> oh my God, that... Oh, that's amazing. Oh, that's really great, Wen. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of you. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Great, great first read. Um, what I love about this scene is that there is so much history between these two, not only just how they grew up, et cetera, but also that all the, the script be prior to now, they've been having arguments about where they're gonna place dad. So some of the um, tension between them is, not, is you know, both 
about their relationship, but also about that they haven't gotten along for quite a while now in terms of who's going to decide about that. Um, uh, that's lovely. Um, let's try it again. So, so I, basically what I do uh, for the crowd is um, I, I think about the beats of the scene where the scene changes, right? So there's a structural thing where scenes, um, scenes are about changing story, right? So the story has changed here from the beginning to the end. And what the, what the discovery is here that John, um, John discovers that his sister got uh, a Guggenheim or she says she does, she did. And um, that is his most coveted um, award that he would ever get as an artist. Um, it's something that's highly illogical that she would get, but she's very convincing about it. And I think that moment where she decides to say, yeah, is sort of the turning point of the scene. She has a choice there to reinforce her um, her lie or um, or not. And I don't think because of the tension between them, because of their back, you know, their story about getting their dad settled and wanting different things about that. I think she's really trying to stick it to him in a way. Also, I think that begins at the beginning of the scene, which is his um, sort of blithely asking her, I need you to spend Thanksgiving with dad. That was not the deal that feels, Wendy is quite sensitive because of her um, porta potty being a temp um, to being um, sort of thrown at, you know, dad or like being the expendable one in the relationship and in the family because she's less important than John. That's why this scene happens is um, Wendy's trying to out status John to, to pull him down a, a notch. Um, Melissa, do you have a question or should, well, I don't, I'm not sure what to do. No, to I'm waving my pen. I can see Laura active up there and I, Laura is so great. Um, should we try it again? Laura do it again and then if it doesn't work, Melissa. Yeah, I think let's try one more time. I mean, I definitely think if everyone besides us turns off their camera, it will often improve the bandwidth on Zoom. So that may help. Right. A shot. The whole time I was doing it, I was trying to be present and in the moment, because that's also a secret of successful scene. But I, I was also having like a little thought in my mind that Laura would be doing it better. <laughs> so, <laughs> I wanted to go back and do it. <laughs> you have to banish that thought. But um, so all so, actors think that, you know, it's a thing. Right, that so, we so one of my approaches as a director is I really feel like the actors are my collaborator collaborators, um, that they're bringing things to the to the table in the terms of their performance and their choices that I, I didn't think of, right? I'm a director and I think a certain way about structure and about how to motivate the actors. And I do have an understanding of what the scene needs to achieve. And how we do that is really the creative act between actors and directors. So um, I'm, I'm gonna probably read through again and with you guys and have you make some a different choice if you want to give you some actions and see what happens um, with that. Um, I do I do want to point to a couple of things in the language because that's super important. The way the language is structured by the writer is super important. So I need you to spend Thanksgiving with dad and her understanding that she thought everything was going to be together with dad. So how, you know, that's uh, Laura, what I would ask you is, is you don't have to give me an answer, but how do you feel about being relegated and imagine what that looks like you're going to be going to the nursing home and hanging out with dad the whole day. So, and how does that feel to have your brother, you know, assume that that's just going to be a no problem. Right. Um, and I also think there's, um, there's something about being so self-involved. I imagine that John says that because Wendy said that about him. So there's a little bit of back and forth as, as siblings, you know, have the same language often. So, um, and then I think this moment, um, as we get there, I'd love to see you make that choice, Laura, to um, continue the lie. You have only one word to do it, right? But let's, let's have a moment there. Um, and, and Caleb, this is really, um, for John, this is maybe the worst thing that's ever happened to him, <laughs> right? Because he's a serious artist. He's got a tenure track job at a university. He's writing a book about Bertolt Brecht. Um, and he's, you know, probably received some writing awards, but, you know, not a big thing. But um, that his sister, who, you know, you can kind of tell what his opinion of her is, uh, has gotten the Guggenheim is just about the worst thing that you can imagine, right? Um, and, and I think she knows that. 
I think that's why she goes there because there's a lot of pain between these two, right? Like I said, the, the you know, given circumstances up to now is they've had this horrible struggle about who's going to take care of dad. And she's not been in the real world at all about how much care dad needs. So um, with that, let's, um, let's read it again. I need you to spend uh, Thanksgiving with dad. We're not gonna do it together? Uh, it's my only time to get away for research. Oh, well, <laughs> I have things I have to do. <laughs> like what? Oh, I don't know, like my life, for instance, you know, the, the one in New York City. Oh, well, maybe it's time to stop being so self-involved and think about somebody else's life for a change. Oh yeah, like you. You know, you, you who can't put his book aside for, for one minute while dad is dying. I have to get this thing finished, Wendy. Mm. My editor thinks it's a really good time for it. Oh, yeah. I, I heard everyone's really itching for a book about Bertolt Brecht this holiday season. Wendy, I'm working. Yeah. Okay, I'm working. I know, I know. I know you are, I'm sorry, sorry. I'm sorry, it's just, I got a lot writing on this book and your life is a lot more portable than mine. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Like like a toilet? Like, oh, like a port -a party huh? No, I'm just saying you don't have a job job. <sighs> I do. I have obligations and, mm. you know, your, your life is more portable. Can't you just hook up with a temp agency down here or something? Um, actually, John, I'm being funded right now um, to work on my place. And maybe that sounds a little bit self-involved, but um, I also have an obligation to a prestigious foundation that has put a lot of faith in me. Okay, and frankly, has given me a hell of a lot more support than he has or hers. You got it. What? The Guggenheim. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really. What? What? Why are you sound so surprised? I'm not. It's just a really hard thing to get is all. I've applied half a dozen times and I never got one. <laughs> well, I did and, <laughs> and so did 200 other something people, you know, who, who are considered and promising in their, in their field or whatever. I mean, well, why can't you just be happy for me? I am. I am. It's great. Oh, they must have a whole different set of criteria for playwrights. Oh, they like my work, John. Okay, they, they think I'm good. Why is that so hard for you to believe? I believe it. I just can't believe you've been keeping it a secret. I just found out. Just now. Oh my God, that's amazing. It's really great one. I'm really proud of you. Yeah. Great, yeah. excellent, thank you. That was wonderful. Um, so, do you, <laughs> sorry. Do you guys have any questions or uh, about the script or about um, areas that you want to try something different? I have a couple of ideas, but I'd like to hear what your feedback is. Um, anything that's not working for you or whatever? Uh, no, I I, I, I I liked those notes you gave. Uh, definitely, it felt Great. different. So we've heard how you prepare for this, but how do Laura and Caleb prepare for this? Laura, do you want to go first? <laughs> sure. Um, 
So usually what I do is when I get a script, I read through it and just for fun, I just, you know, what it is about. And then um, I start to kind of paint a picture in my mind about who that person is, um, what, what, what kind of person is, how they see the world. And um, there are diff like literally so many exercises you need to find um, who you, like what you're gonna go with. And I usually just start with improvisation and I picture the person in my mind and I take on their postural costume, the way they walk, the way they touch things, the way they see the world, the way they judge other people. Um, and with that in mind, I just start improvising um, the whole scene. And by that, I stay away from the lines. I try to dig deep and finding out what is actually going on underneath because we as people never say what we actually want. And in this scene, especially, there's so much more going on. Like This is not just about a, like a, this Guggenheim or whatever. This is, there's so much history there. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> what about you, Caleb? I start, I re I'm really into script analysis. Um, I really try to, I, I try to study a script before I uh, dive right into it. Um, so for example, with this script, you know, John, the very first thing that he says in this scene, the snippet that we're doing is, I need you to spend Thanksgiving with that. He's not even asking her a question. He's not asking her to do it. He's <laughs> just making a demand. So that immediately kind of tells you where John thinks where I think that I am on the totem pole here. Um, and I, I, I immediately almost kind of lose my patience with her as soon as she gives me any sort of pushback. So that, that shows me that, that what the dynamic in this relationship is. And uh, I also try to think of if I try to personalize it. So this is a brother sister relationship. I have brothers and sisters, so I can kind of bring some of that to it. It's not the same type of relationship that I have with my brothers and sisters, but it's that sibling rivalry um, kind of aspect. So that's the way that I, I try to get into a script is find, first of all, just look at the script and see what kind of clues those, the, the screenwriter is giving me or the playwrights giving me. Mm -hmm. And also just try to personalize it as much as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. So while they're personalizing things, what are you doing, Tracy? Um, I am paying close attention to the word choices of the characters, <laughs> and I'm watching how um, they're executing, um, trying to get the sharpest, in this particular scene, the sharpest exchange I can. And that's what I think is in the words of the script, promising, I'm working, I'm working, all these hot button issues. So I am also looking at um, and maybe digging underneath some of the words, some of the words they've got, some of the sentiments of, of the dynamic they've got, and then other things I might point to. For example, I'm working, I'm working. That's an issue for Wendy, right? Because <laughs> she sort of works, right? And mm -hmm. also, um, this, uh, it's not, uh, Wendy says um, um, about, uh, oh, like you who can't put his book aside for one minute while dad dies. Not dad is dying, dad dies. So it's exaggerated, right? Like dad's not dying right now, <laughs> right? But it, they're using, they're pulling out the knives with each other, right? Um, uh, so you go through your script and you're highlighting words. Meanwhile, Laura, you're improvising. You're not even using the words. <laughs> so when you come together for a first rehearsal, how does that all play out together? Because Laura is sort of new to the words. Caleb's got his whole body thing going and you're all about the words. So how does that all work together, Tracy? Um, well, I was, I also use action quite a bit. I haven't actually even talked about that much because they've been playing action, which is what are you doing to the other character? What's your, um, you know, you're ridiculing your, uh, making them feel guilty or, you know, playing high status with them. So these guys got that. But um, one of the things I also think about when I'm using action is, is not just in the words, but can, can you physicalize that action? For example, if you're, if John is um, bragging about his, you know, his book or whatever, how he's 
that's in the line, but also how is he showing that in his body in some kind of way? It's, it's subtle, but I actually believe, and this is because I started in theater, that we actually read the body first, even in film. We read body language really deeply almost before we think about it. So, um, you know, that, that would carry off into how, how John's playing this with her. And you, you did this great thing right at the beginning here, Caleb, where you kind of squinted your eyes when you first heard her talking about, um, uh, we're not going to do it together. You, you sort of got this look on your face. I don't think you realized it, but it was really like uh, painful. <laughs> it looked like it was painful and like, I can't stand to have to talk to her. <laughs> That's what I got from it, right? I can't stand that I have to even deal with her anymore. Um, I'm not sure if that answers the question, Jenna, but but I use action actions and I use physical language a lot. So at and your rehearsal with actors do you have them read it before you tell them anything yes yes so you see what they bring to it right exactly and then do you ever change your mind about what you were going to have them do based on how they re read it all the time all the time um i know it pretty well but they have their other they have another way into it and so i that's what i was saying it's, actors are collaborators with me we're collaborating on finding the best way, the thing that makes the most sense, the thing that's the deepest, the thing that's the funniest, right? What, how, how can we find this between us? Um, I have an idea about what the scene needs to do and I will always push the scene to do that, but there's a million ways up the mountain. And I can't tell you how many times actors have shown me things that I wouldn't have ever imagined, right? That are actually better than my choices. Right. So Caleb, what happens when you get a piece of direction that's so different than what you thought that you want to throw the director across the room? Um, do you want the truth? I say, um, okay, and then I do what I want. <laughs> I've been on the set with you, so I've actually seen that. So I'm glad to hear you're being honest. Um, what about you, Laura? Um, <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't actually know. I think I do want to follow what the director sees. Um, but when I do have some, when it doesn't feel right, you know, when it feels like I'm forcing it, then I would say something. But um, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I try to be as flexible as I can. That's why I do improvisation because it just keeps me loose and um, find, lets me find different ways of how to play the scene. So, so Tracy, what do you do when you get an actor like Caleb and he won't change? Um, uh, he won't change. <laughs> um, I was going to say earlier, and I didn't say this, I ask questions a lot. How does he feel when she says that to him? Then what does he do? And I'm letting him fill it out, right? So if, if I got into loggerheads with Caleb and he just wanted to do it a certain way, I might ask him a couple of questions or give him some more facts um about the scene or or why don't you try this different action or whatever right I'm trying to dislodge that a bit and get him to play because I, i'm not saying it's wrong or bad but it may not be the most effective way and I, I i always try to communicate with the actors as best i can i find questions to be really a great way to work because it's not telling and um they get to come up with the answer right but i would also infuse my question with how does it feel to you that you that your sister's living with you right now and she actually doesn't have a job and she doesn't want to help you with dad like see i'm using given circumstances and really trying to get him to like see it what would you say to that caleb i uh, i would say i i would feel really put upon and upset and kind of um what do you want to uh, do? Say, uh, <laughs> yell at her, scream at her. Sure. Uh, yeah. Tell Put her, her in her place. Ma yeah, make her feel guilty. Sure. Right. So we're going from feelings into action there. So action is key. Um, feelings are there, but we have a feeling and then we do an action to get out of the feeling or to push forward or, or whatever. Um, um, but I think exploring that with the actors rather than telling them how to, how to feel and what to do. I'm not in it. I used to be an actor a million years ago. I'm not in it. They're in it. I can hear it, but I'm not playing it. And I can't tell you how many times I've asked them a question and then to come up with something more brilliant than anything I could have ever thought of. 
And that's that's the beauty and excitement of being a director with great actors. So let's flip to the next scene. Yeah. And everybody knowing all of this, let's hear Caleb and Laura's first read. And this is without anything that Tracy has said to them. I would only say one thing is that this, the Guggenheim scene is before, of course, the FEMA scene in the screenplay. It, it's in chronological order, so yeah. Right, the scene you're about to see guys comes after the one that you just saw. Yes, um, yes, so there's a lot of given circumstances that carry over in that. Yeah, right. let's see. I'd just like to say, um, the amount of times that I've gotten a note from a director that where I want to throw them across the room is probably like three out of my many, many years of acting. Caleb is so sweet. He's like, I still want to be cast in pieces films. So that was not a broad comment. Don't worry, Caleb. We know you. We well, like working here. Sometimes, sometimes directors are um, not very respectful and don't understand what actors have to do. That also generates that kind of a response. All right. Be there for okay. Should we read it? <clears throat> Where did the money come from when? I got her grand. Cut the crap, Wendy. I got her grand, John. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right, fine. Okay, I didn't win the, win the Guggenheim, okay? Big fucking deal, was a different kind of grand. What kind? What? <laughs> you said you got a different kind of grant. What did you get? Yeah. What? Fima. I've never, I've never heard of that. Wait, Fima. Fima. Fima? Oh, you took the money from Fima. I, I was granted the money, okay? <laughs> what was the federal emergency? 9-11. What's it got to do with you? Oh, I work downtown, okay? I, I was affected. Everyone was affected. The whole world was affected, but they're not going around taking money away from people who really need it. Okay, there was no work for months, okay? All temps applied and I, I didn't do it at first. Look, look, I'm, I'm trying to get my life together. By stealing money from the federal government. Oh, oh I didn't steal it, John, okay? There was a thing where you could apply if you're like, lost 25% of, of your like income or something like that. And I, I can't remember the details, details, but like call FEMA, okay? Like just, just ask them. Apparently they care more about me than you do. Dean, <laughs> that was great. That was great. So um, I love these two scenes next to each other because the Guggenheim sort of fuels this in a really interesting way, right? It's just another conversation with Wendy about money and about status and about, and, and it also explains for me um, that first um, sentence, that first line that John has about where, where'd you get the money? It's highly, you know, it feels like he's highly suspicious of her there. Mm -hmm. um, so um, yeah. Uh, any thoughts, actors? Any any comments, thoughts, questions? I have a couple of things to try out, but go ahead. Um, there's a weird part of me that I I think here that John's almost happy that she didn't get the Guggenheim, but at, at, at still at the same time, the words are like just still utter, um, you know, disbelief and kind of indignation that she you know would take money from the federal government but so it's just like the between the words and the way i think the character would feel about this revel revelation you know and how does he feel so it's just it's like the same thing except that guggenheim is a little bit more personal for him but you're still taking money from someone you're not actually earning it is his thought yeah okay laura 
Um, I was just thinking that Wendy definitely in the beginning feels like she's just be like, oh yeah, I got a grant, you know, like no big deal, like trying to move the conversation from that um, and then gets caught and tries to kind of find her way back in, to, into his like, so that he can see that I'm an established artist and I got all these great things. Um, yeah. So I feel like she feels a little cornered maybe, or like she, she panics, you know, cause she, I think she lies a lot and this might be one of the times where she actually gets caught and it's a big deal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's interesting to me and I've never taken money from FEMA or understood that process, but I don't know that they call it a grant. <laughs> <laughs> but that's an artist term and that would needle him right it's a grant and I think this is actually Laura just from the last scene this is what she was gonna say mm. she was gonna tell him about FEMA and then he said you got it and then she kind of went with it right <laughs> so just so you know in between these John actually calls the New York Times <laughs> and asks their you know artist board or whoever um makes up the Guggenheim or prints the Guggenheim and he asked them to check if her name was on it. So uh, that's how he found out that she didn't get it, right? So mm -hmm. makes you realize he's pretty serious and she, you know, she's not to be trusted in some way. Um, uh, 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 Grant, of, uh, I think it's really interesting, Lauren, you were really playing this well, this vagueness, this trying to avoid it by, obfuscating things in the beginning. Um, uh, uh, the, and, the, and then how to get into the FEMA thing. Um, I think one of the issues both in both of these scenes is, is work. We talked about that a little bit. So um, I work downtown. She's really proud of that. And, and I'm sure that that did happen with workers who were, you know, down, you know, Manhattan, downtown, ground zero, I'm sure they did get FEMA funding. She just chooses to talk about it in this particular way, which is, I don't know, Laura, why do you think she chooses to talk about it as a grant? What was her purpose in that, do you think? <laughs> well, it also makes me just feel better, you know, of, uh, right. seeing it as a grant rather than something um, like FEMA, you know, like, kind of maybe maybe i'm lying to myself a little bit maybe I, I want it to be a grant you know maybe i really wanted that guggenheim and i just there's no chance i would ever get it so right it just makes me feel better <laughs> i know that sometimes um all of uh artists who get on to unemployment call it an artist grant <laughs> 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 right um okay great um i think uh let's see here I had a note. Um, let's try it again. Um, this time, I want you to defend yourself there a little bit more. Like, really shame him, Laura, for even asking you. In the beginning, beat, I got a grant, right? Mm -hmm. um, shame him for asking. I, mean, I think it's her only stance is like, you shouldn't, you know, that's, that's kind of takes her down to her core. So if she can shame him from asking her, that would be a great, you know, great way to stop this kind of inquisition. And for you, Caleb, um, keep poking at her. Keep poking at her, right? See, figure, try to figure out what you're going to do that's going to get her to admit it. Okay. Um, this, this questioning on the, uh, you know, what's, what are all the questions? That could be a really uh, detective story there. Okay. Okay, great. Let's do it again. <clears throat> Where did the money come from, when? I got a grin. Cut the crap, Wendy. I got a grin, John. <laughs> All right, fine. I didn't get the, the, I didn't win a Guggenheim. Okay. Big fucking deal. It was a different kind of grant. What kind? What? You said you got a different kind of grant. What'd you get? FEMA. What? FEMA. I've never heard of that. 
Svima. Fima? Fima. You took money from Fima. Okay. I was granted the money. What was the federal emergency? 9-11, John. What's that got to do with you? I, I work downtown, okay? I was affected. Everyone was affected. The whole world was affected. But they're not going around taking money from people who really need it. All right. There was no work for months. All times apply. Okay, I didn't do it at first. Look, John. I'm trying to get my life together. By stealing money from the federal government. Oh, I didn't steal it, John. Okay, there was a thing where you could apply if you lost 25% of your income and or something like that. And I can't remember all of it, obviously, but like, why don't you just call FEMA? I mean, I asked them. Apparently they care more about me than you do. <laughs> Great. Great. Hey, Tracy? Yeah. Let's play a little bit for our audience. Let's turn the performance in some way that's very different than where you were going at the moment. Do you have a suggestion? Uh, she's trying to get a sympathy. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, get him, I mean, all the way through, that's a little tough, but let's see how you can do that, Laura. Um, try to, maybe it's a dismissing it. You know, so it's not such a big deal. You, you don't, sometimes with brothers, you kind of show them the target and they go right for it. Maybe she's dismissing it and not showing it. I think a really important line for her is, look, I'm trying to get my life together. That's probably the most Jessica? honest thing she says. Trace, it's Melissa, but not yeah. on camera. <laughs> so what I'm thinking, and this is for everyone who's attending, is when there's a big change, like what Jenna just suggested, um, because I also like everyone on on who's acting for you come from an acting background. What I find really helpful is to change the given circumstances or have like a secret. So hmm. Tracy and Laura, what I might think about is um, there's quite a bit of evidence in this script that you, this is not the first time you've lied, right? That you're sort of flighty, unreliable. Um, I think you might make up either a secret or take it as part of the backstory that maybe you've had a breakdown before and so therefore that might be a reason why you want to get his sympathy because you know you feel like you're about to crack. For example, this is really for the attendees, Laura could make up whatever she wants in her head that's gonna be fun for her to play. Um, but that would really shift it off of like manipulating him or you know, really, I mean, she could even play defend herself which is the choice that you know, Tracy had suggested before but from a different reason why, right? Which is kind of what we haven't talked about it yet, but it stinks. So why does it matter, that, right? That's just an idea. You don't have to take it. Does that make sense to you, Laura? Getting his sympathies, that's what, we, that's what we're kind of going for here? Is that what you're saying, kind of, Melissa? Well, I mean, Jenna, that, that was the action. I mean, the way that I would, the way that I would direct is to say, Laura, um, and I think I would say this to Caleb as well, you know, you've cracked before and it's about to happen again. And then I would let Laura decide how to play that. I wouldn't, this is just me. I wouldn't right. give her the action because it might not be fun for her to get sympathy. It might be fun for her to do something else and she's gonna surprise me. And then exactly. Caleb, I also would share that pit, bit of information with when adjusting the backstory because I think it would affect him. Right. Depending. He's not going to know I, what Laura's going to do until she does it, but I think it might be exciting for him. <laughs> I've, got, yeah, I, I, I'll, I've just put a little snippet into my head of something that's happened before, so I think that'll it'll, it'll change how I. Right. Think. Great. Let's see it. Where did the money come from? When? I got a grant. Cut the crap, Wendy. Oh, come on, I got a grand, John, okay? Okay, fine. I didn't get the Gunheim. Big fucking deal. It was a different kind of grand. What kind? 
What? You said you got a different kind of grant. What did you get? FEMA. What? I've never heard of that. FEMA. FEMA? Yeah, FEMA. FEMA. You took money from FEMA. I, I was granted the money, John. What was the federal emergency? 9-11. What has that got to do with you? I work, I work downtown. Okay, I was affected. Everyone was affected. The whole world was affected, but they're not going around taking money from people who really need it. There was no work for months, okay? All time supply, and I, I didn't do it at first. Look, I'm just... Trying to get my life together, okay? By stealing money from the federal government. I didn't steal it, John. Fuck, there was a thing where you could apply and if you lost 25% of your income and or something like that, I can't remember all of it, but you know, why don't you call FEMA? I mean, apparently they care more about me than you do. Great. That was fabulous. So did you in the audience see the change between the two backstories they came with? And that was a totally different energy. So Tracy, this is sort of the first or second rehearsal, but farther along when you're preparing, like very close to opening night, what would you be doing that's, that's different than these earlier rehearsals? Well, we'd be physicalizing and you know we'd be, we'd be on set staging it, of course. Um, mm, do you mean in theater or do you mean in film? I mean that's what that's the next step here is to have them up and moving. So I have a related question for you, Tracy. Just building on Jenna's question, that when yeah. you're rehearsing, do you rehearse from the beginning to the end of the scene always, or do you ever just go in and work on a specific section? Like, how does that work? Um, I, I usually, I, I work on a section, but then I put the whole thing in, then I have them read the whole thing. Um, I feel like it needs a continuity to it. So if there's a big change, then that's going to play out later than where we've made the change, right. I think. So um, just, I, I was just going to say for the, for the attendees, like Caleb was really open earlier in the rehearsal. And Caleb, you said you had this idea, which I thought was wonderful that you were you know, for the previous version that you were actually really happy to hear that she yeah. had a grant. And then I heard you say, and I'm just bringing this to the attention for potential actors and directors and Caleb and Laura know that I always do this in training because it's very common because actors have great imaginations and will come up with multiple ideas at the same time. Then you said, Caleb, uh, I also feel, <laughs> this, is, this is always a trigger for me, but also, we're kind of right. I heard you say, but I also feel like I, you know, I'm indignant, I think is the word you used. I'm indignant about her taking the money from FEMA. And so what, for, for the attendees, what you could work on like in a later rehearsal is you're just looking for these polish moments or you're on the set, you're gonna go for another take. So something I noticed in the last run through, although so much of the scene had shifted and their relationship had shifted and they made different use of the lines, that one section is a little bit um, stuck with what you said before about the indignant, but I know you want to get off it, Caleb, because you said it before about I was, you know, in the previous version, you were very, um, right. very happy <laughs> that she had one that you can have. With this backstory, you know, if she has had a breakdown before, let me ask you a question. You're having to deal with your father as John, right? Right. Want to have to deal with her breakdown? You don't have to answer these questions out loud, but you know, did you have to go get her last time? Because do you think your dad is going to go? Right. So that might give you some reason to, you know, be able to make a big shift, and I think also get a different traction on those lines. So if you just want to see what that looks like, um, Tracy, can you just like find a a little section for them to start with that's close to that turn. And I was gonna to say to Laura, um, 
just to change for you to keep having fun and stay alive, because I know you love improv and spontaneity. Um, from the beginning, what if you've already cracked? Do you know what I mean? You're barely holding it together, mm -hmm. however you want to interpret that. Um, so whatever it is that you need from him, and I'm not gonna ask you what your objective is, but whatever you need from him, you really need it immediately in the scene. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? There's no warm up because stakes are high for you. Do you wanna just see it that way, Tracy? Just, we could. Yeah, that. yeah, I mean, I was gonna point to, um, and maybe this is under, underneath what we've just been talking about is, is her, him watching her unravel a bit, if that's happening. I'm just, look, I'm just trying to get my life together. Right, she kind of goes, she, she changes the subject, she changes and becomes much more, and it's not about fighting anymore. It's about appealing to him in a different way and he's seeing that, yeah. Should we try it? Just that section, do we want to do Melissa or? Um... Because I just, I didn't mean to, but I got so excited about working with Laura because it's one of my fave things that I just spit out something that I, after, as soon as I said it, I was like, wait, Melissa, you specifically wanted to work on a section and then you gave her a direction. That's the top of the scene. So <laughs> the whole scene, maybe the whole scene, because I think Caleb, I mean, Caleb's, um, it's not a secret because everybody knows it, but you know, the adjustment that Caleb is working on now is also related to the beginning of the scene. Right. So let's just say, last time you saw her, Caleb, she was fine. Okay. The scene will start and then you're gonna process and whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen. Okay. The last time you saw her, she was fine. Right. And I would add, and this is also from the uh, chat, but Laura, maybe you're proud of the FEMA thing. You're not trying to hide it. It's fine. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Let's do it. Where did the money come from when? I got a grant. Cut the crap, Wendy. I got a grand, John. Okay, fine. I didn't get the Guggenheim. Okay, big fucking deal. It was a different kind of grand. What kind? What? You said you got a different kind of grant. What did you get? FEMA. What? What? FEMA. I've never, I've never heard of that. FEMA? FEMA. You took money from FEMA. No, I was granted that money. What was the federal emergency? 9-11, John. What's that got to do with you? I worked out town, okay? I was affected. Everyone was affected. The whole world was affected, but they're not going around taking money from people who really need it. There was no work for months. Okay, all Tim's applied, and I didn't do it at first. Look, I'm trying to get my life together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By stealing money from the federal government. I didn't steal it, John, okay? There was a thing where you could apply and there, if you like lost 25% of your income and I, fuck, I don't remember the details, okay? But what if, what if you don't just call FEMA, okay? And well, because apparently they care more about me than you ever did. Great. Um, great, okay. Um, can I have you guys do an exercise that I super love that always uncovers a lot? It's called the subtext exercise. And so how it works is you say your subtext. And so for the audience involved, it's what we're thinking and feeling that we don't dare say. <laughs> um, the thoughts behind our, what we say. So it's what you're thinking and feeling. And then you rise up and say your line. And then the other character says what they're thinking and feeling and rise up into the line. So we'll go through that once that way. And then without talking about it, we'll go back into the scene and just do the scene again. And usually it's like grass. It sort of grows in the scene. Can you just give me an example of what that would be so, like? Oh, I can't believe Caleb just asked me that. Well, so Caleb, yeah. <laughs> oh my God, Tracy's being rude to Caleb. So Tracy, I think we're ready to start now. 
<laughs> like you don't do like you don't do subtext, Caleb. Caleb, I think you can do it. Can you start embarrassed me in front of the whole crowd? Yeah, so I think we're good, Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got it. Yeah. Okay. You guys got you ready? You can't make a mistake with it. It's okay. just it's really just tag with lines kind of. Yeah. And then okay. again, it will stop and we'll just do the scene without subtext, but it'll all be in there. Okay. So for the attendees. They're going, yes, the inner life, Ron, exactly. They're going to say what they're thinking out loud and then do the line. It's like if they were a piece of clothing and they turn themselves inside out, you're gonna get to see all the seams and the construction inside. It's also just for the actors to improvise and then they kind of start to, you know, it's, it's a free improv exercise for them. Okay, let's do it. I need to check dad's bank account. Where did the money come from when? Fuck me in the ass. I got a grand. That could mean a million different things. Cut the crap, Wendy. I cannot do this anymore. I got a grand, John. Hello. Here goes nothing. Okay, fine. I didn't get Guggenheim. Big fucking deal. I was a different kind of grand. I wonder what his name is. What kind? <laughs> Jesus. <sighs> what? Now I can tell you're stalling. You said you got a different kind of grant. What did you get? Why are you acting like I'm stupid? FEMA. Now she's just making things up. What? I've never heard of that. Okay, <laughs> you're being so condescending right now. It's FEMA. 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 Oh, wow, this sounds like a felony. You took money from FEMA? <laughs> of course. You think I'm a criminal. I was granted that money. Okay. We got to, this, I have to get her out of this. What was the federal emergency? Are you fucking kidding me right now? 9-11. This is worse than I thought. What has that got to do with you? <laughs> so fucking typical. You're so self-involved. I work downtown. I was affected. Once again, it's all about her, even 9-11. Everyone was affected, the whole world was affected, but they're not going around taking money away from people who really need it. How, how can you not support me on this? Like, fuck you, dude, fuck you. There was no work for months, all Thames applied. I didn't do it at first. Oh, look, I'm just, I'm trying to get my life together. Okay, that's fine, but this isn't the way you should do it. By stealing money from the federal government? Oh my God, you're being so fucking controlling. I didn't steal it, John. There was a thing where you could apply if you lost 25% of your income or something like that. I can't remember all the details, but why don't you go call FEMA and ask them since they care more about me than you ever did. Uh, Trace, you're on mute. That was so funny, guys. Let's just go back into it. That was lovely. And just incorporating that without, you know, that need to say the words. That was lovely. Great. Where did the money come from, Wen? I got a grant. Cut the crap, Wendy. I got a grant, John. <sighs> okay, fine. Fine, I didn't get the Guggenheim, okay? Big fucking deal. I got a, I got a different kind of grant. What kind? What? You said you got a different kind of grant. What did you get? FEMA. What? I've never heard of that. FEMA. FEMA. Yeah, FEMA. FEMA? You took money from FEMA? <laughs> I was granted the money. 
What was the what, what what was the federal emergency? Um, nine eleven. Uh, what does that got to do with you? What? I I work downtown. Okay, I was affected. Everyone was affected. The whole world was affected, but they're not going around taking money from people who really need it. There, were, there was no work for months, okay? All, all terms apply. All terms apply. I, I didn't do it at first, but... Oh! Look, I'm just trying to get my life together. By, by stealing money from the federal government. Oh! <gasps> I didn't steal it, John. Okay, there was a thing where you could apply and if you lost like 25% of your income, I could, I don't remember all the fucking details, okay? But, but why don't you go ask them? Why don't you call FEMA, okay? Because apparently they care more about me than you do. <laughs> nice work, you guys. That was lovely. Really, really great. Really lovely. Um, so, I, yeah, go ahead. The difference for those of you who've been wondering between movies and theater, and Tracy at the moment is principally a theater director, um, is that on in film, you wouldn't do all this. You wouldn't have all this. In film, there's basically no rehearsal in general. So these lovely actors are going to show up, and right before the scene starts, we're going to have them run through it once. And then the director would give them notes like Tracy has been doing, try to steer them, and then you'd shoot a take. And then Tracy would adjust them and you'd shoot another take. But other than the one run through and Tracy adjusting them once before the camera rolls, that's about it. And then it's on your mark, get set, go, you're acting. So my question to Caleb and Laura, because you both are really incredible stage actors and you're both really incredible film actors, is which do you prefer and why? <clears throat> um, to be honest, theater is a lot harder uh, than film acting. Um, but they're both so different. I don't know. I, right now, I like film acting uh, just because I have a lot of, of, of theater experience. Um, but film acting to me is, uh, I feel like it's a, a, it's, you can't lie. You can't lie on stage either necessarily, but it's, you have to be there with the film acting. You, it's, the camera's right here. And it, you have to be in the moment or it, it's not real. And what about you, Laura? Um, I think that's just because I don't have really any theater experience. I would pick film acting um, ju just because I think that the camera is such a beautiful instrument to capture. Um, emotions without it's it's very highly sensitive I guess um, so I I don't know I would even say film acting might be harder but I don't know I, I think everyone's different well acting is acting in the end and it's fun either way so if it's so film you, work you, you know. prepare the same for film and, can, and stage um pretty much I think for theater there's more like physicality at some point because I had directors on film tell me that I moved too much. So um, and like everything has to be kind of toned down, like has to live inside me more on film than maybe on stage because the person in the last role has to see what I'm feeling. I don't work, if I'm doing theater versus film with film, I try to go into it, um, it sounds weird. I don't like to have my lines as memorized as I would for theater, if that makes sense, because I find that when I, I'll, I'll kind of take a look at the lines, I'll have them memorized, but I, I'm not ru running around my apartment saying the lines. Um, 
you know, I'll write them out or, or do things like that. But I, I, I try not to say them out loud as much as I would for a theater because it, it, it creates a spontaneity and a spark that um, that's just my, my personal trick that I use. I tend to surprise myself more that way. I don't even know if that makes sense at all. <laughs> Can I weigh in here, Jenna? So, so my experience is that stories have the same components, right? Whether they're filmed or theater or in a play, often the, the story is just the story. So you're still working with the same concepts, um, whether it's theater or film. My experience has been with film, it's more just about seeing it in the eyes. It's not about any less, less that I would do here in try, trying to work with different variations on their performance. But it would be also if they were getting too big for the camera, it would be like, you know what, you don't, you don't have to work so hard. You can just think the thoughts and we get it. It's a matter of scale, but I do think the scene analysis is alive in both medium, right? And so the actors do need to understand. And so I, I always wonder like, if the director isn't working with the actors, who's deciding what the story is, right? I don't know, just a question. The editor. <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I don't know, just the master. master. Because you've been in some of our films as an actress and you are an excellent actress as good an actress as you are a director. What's the difference in your prep? Um, you know what? I trained as an actress so long ago. I am, uh, yeah, it's thinking the thoughts. It's relaxing. If I can relax, that's, I'm halfway there. But, but, but um, being, you know, with a camera on your face is not conducive to relaxing in, in a, a play, and I haven't been in a play for a hundred years, but um, you're playing with other people and it's almost like you can imagine you're just having these conversations, but with the film, the camera right in your face. So you have to just think the thoughts. Yeah, but I meant you really, when you're in a, the prep you do as an actor, how is that different than the prep you do as a director? Oh, the, the actor personalizes every, all the lines and the relationships and what their journey is. And the director, I don't get into as much detail. I use actions a lot with actors, but I understand both characters and how they're colliding and making sure that they're listening to each other and what word is important, et cetera. So um, an actor just knows, you know, their path and how it gets buffeted by the other character, but the director is the marshalling, does the marshalling of that relationship. How, you know, are they having a, horrible fight are they is he realizing she's about to lose her shit right here <laughs> right like what are the possibilities there so you'd say the director is the conductor yep absolutely and what do you what what do you find when when you have actors who um are challenging <laughs> what 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 is the Thing you can do to unchallenge them, to make them trust you? Oh, you know, it always depends on what the challenge is, Jana, but, um, um, you know, I, I don't know how to answer it because it's so sort of open-ended. I mean, basically my understanding of the story and my willingness to let them try things all the time um, not being the expert on the story. Cause I think the actors, the directors sort of, you know, in some way, and the writer are giving the story to the actors, the actors take it on, and then the director conducts it and edits it or whatever. Um, so empowering them to make choices that are exactly wrong or exactly right, right, all in everything in between. But I don't think I don't feel like they ever make a mistake in that way. They just have to um, keep trying and keep working for something that's true. So Caleb said something really interesting, which is you can't lie on camera. Right. Do you think you can lie on stage? No, but you can fudge. <laughs> what about you, Tracy? Do you think you can lie on stage? No. I mean, I, I can see it when they're lying and I stop that. I can see it when they're not, when they're doing something by rote, but um, 
it might be easier for some actors to call it in. But I, I think if, the, if they're not, you know, in a huge theater, maybe, right? But the kinds of work that I do in the theater is very small. And um, I think we all, you know, our hearts um, sync up. You know this when we go into theaters, our hearts sync up with the actors on stage. That's a proven fact. So we can spot a lie often. I mean, I, I'm a, the worst critic of theater ever. <laughs> it's kind of painful. So let's talk a little bit, because we probably have about another five minutes of your time, about blocking the actors, their movement through space and their physicality. Right. How do you go about preparing all of that? Well, I work a lot organically, um, like you were saying earlier. And um, basically, I think um, I start with um, movement usually should happen on a beat change. Not always, but that is the best time for it because an actor's, a oh, character's wait, changing. Stop what for a sec, stop, because some of these people aren't going to know what a beat change is. So can you give them an example? Oh, sure. Um, it's when there's a, how you, not a, how you can see it in a script is when there's a change of subject. The character's trying something different. They're bringing up a new topic, right? So there's, uh, can we think of one here, Caleb? Uh, a beat change, um, yeah, beat change in, in maybe the um, FEMA scene. Um, when he realizes there's a beat change when he realizes what FEMA is. Yeah, yeah. And so and so let's let's play that. So right before then and then right after. Okay. So uh, Laura, do you mind? Uh, we start at the bottom of um, bottom of the page uh, where she says, "You said you got a different kind of grant." Where well, he says that. Let's start that exchange. Okay. And then you'll hear, so for the audience, you'll hear a subject changes, right? Somebody wants something different, right? They're changing the subject for a reason, and that's a beat change. Okay. You said you got a different kind of grant. What did you get? <laughs> Can't hear you, Laura. I got kicked off Zoom again. Oh shit. No, you're back though. You're back though. So go ahead, Caleb. You well, said you got it. A, a beat change, you guys, when she realized that they were doing something. Yes, were yes. Doing that was great. <laughs> have a beat change. Super clear. In that character, out of character. Clearer, yeah. Yes, that's great. Let's try again. Okay. You said you got a different kind of grant, yeah. what kind? What did you get? Oh, she's frozen again. Darn it. Another example of a beat change because he <laughs> asked his sister and she's frozen. She's so, frozen. Are you to turn it on, please. Turn on your camera, I Melissa. Can do it. I can do it. Okay, let's do it. I'm just looking for this thing. Give me one second because I, I have the, um, is it, what's the line? FEMA, FEMA? Yeah, FEMA, FEMA. FEMA would have never heard of that FEMA. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. okay. I'm just gonna do my best. I make it off okay. You said you got a different kind of grant. What did you get? FEMA. What? I've never heard of that. Yeah, FEMA. 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 Yeah. FEMA. Mm -hmm. You took money from the federal. Mm -hmm. FEMA from the federal. What was the federal emergency? Okay, first of all, I didn't take it, okay? Because it was granted to me. And it was 9-11, all right? 9-11. Okay, so let's stop there. So Tracy, do you wanna talk about physicality? Because we just saw it. Yeah, well, I mean, how does that express it even if you had the sound off? So, Sorry, so clearly so expresses it. Um, but there was a beat change there when, when there's a realization by a character and the subject slightly changes. Now the subject is FEMA, but the subject is not just general FEMA. It's like you took a money from FEMA. That's the problem, right? That's the subject that's just changed, right? So what I saw physically was Melissa's choices sort of also doing this sort of pointy thing at him, which was sort of rude and angular and, um, you know, expressed a lot. Right, pissed off, really pissed off. So did right. any of 
you notice when he asked Laura in the last scene where she got her money and her eyes went right and left, like she was like trying to think of something to say other than FEMA. I, I hope any of you noticed that because mm -hmm. I thought. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So how might you direct the physicality, Tr Tracy? What would you do as a director? Um, for Caleb, it, in this moment, I would say, um, so your discovery is that she's taking money. Yes. Um, how are you going to, and I think what you need to do is sort of nail her on that, right? Nail her, let her know how you feel about it. And I want to, and I would just, I wouldn't tell him what to do. I'd say, I want to see it physically in addition to vocally. So let's see you nail her. Just back up a few lines, Caleb, and nail her. Okay. Where are we taking it from? Trace? Um, just from where we were, just the same okay. beat. Um, <clears throat> you said you got it. Uh, okay. FEMA, 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 Federal Emergency Management. Okay. Go from Laura's FEMA's. Okay. FEMA. 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 You took money from FEMA. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. um, no, it was granted to me. What was the federal emergency? 9-11. What has that got to do with you? Great, great. That's good. That's good. So you see the physical choices they're both making, right? And he keeps coming at the screen, at the screen, at the, you know, like that's, if she was there, he would be coming at her about yeah. that. And so, Kayla, that just cleared up that section that you were talking about earlier, where you had the two choices. You just made that single choice and that had nothing to do with like, it sounded totally different from, from earlier when you were doing the lines. You just like jumped that track, you were all over and owning it, it was awesome. So yeah. Ladies and gentlemen in the audience, Tracy has actually left a rehearsal to do this for us. And I promised her at 8.30, she could go back. Just to go back. Thank so, you, Tracy. Thank you, Tracy. Melissa will thank stay. Thank you, guys. Caleb and Laura will stay, but thank you, Thanks, Tracy. Thanks, Caleb. Thanks, Laura. That was great. Thank so, you. Super. Let's take some questions from the audience real quick for the actors and for Melissa about directing. If, and acting, if you have any, um, we'll just wait. There's a, a massive number of thanks in the chat. So first of all, we just want to thank everyone for their thanks. That's very sweet of you. So does anybody have any questions for Melissa at prepping as a director or the actors prepping as actors? I had a question earlier from Isaiah out there that said, have any of you ever voice acted before? And if so, um, what is the difference from voice acting and regular acting? I have, I've worked on a video game. Um, that's my one voiceover um, thing that I've done. Um, the, the thing with, um, the, the thing with vo <clears throat> voice acting that I found, and like I said, I'm not an expert, I've only done it once is you have to find that physicality that we were talking about before, but in your voice instead. So, <clears throat> for example, if you're with, if you're doing it like comedy, comedy is really about pitch. You're, you know, you're going all over the place with your pitch a lot of the time with comedy. Um, and with, with dramatic stuff, <clears throat> and that, that, uh, that pitch thing is, it's just a natural thing that happens. It's not, it's not something that you have to think about, but um, with with voice acting, that physicality that you would bring to the character, you got to put it in your voice. That's the only difference that um, that I, I I think there really is between voice acting and acting on film or stage. Um, Laura, do you have an answer? Yeah, I've I've taken um, our um, voice over class last semester. And I've come to realize that voice acting is very, very technical. And um, depending on what you do, if you do a lot of commercials, that's it's very efficient, very quick. And when you're shooting a film or a scene, you're in set for so long and you might just sit around and do nothing. Um, but voice acting is really efficient and every breath counts. 
it's really fun. It's really fun, but it's it, there's a lot of technique that goes into it that you probably wouldn't think about it, think of if you don't know anything about it. Um, Melanie would like to know what's your favorite warm up as an actor. Um, my, I'm mine is Alexander, um, <laughs> which is more about physic the physicality um, as well as uh, what we've learned here, link letter. Uh, which is a vo vocal warm up, which kind of helps you um, get to where you're on breath with your voice, where you're not forcing things. Um, it took me a really long time to, to learn that because I used to try to project like an actor. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, and just realizing and, and learning that you have everything that you need inside of you right here and you don't have to worry about once you, once you get that uh, vocal training done at the school, it really, really helps you and changes your acting completely as well. What about you, Laura? Um, mine is also um, from the Alexander Technique, um, which is a class you could take as an actor, which you should, it's really good. Um, it, it's called constructive rest or a bubble exercise. It's, it's pretty much a relaxation exercise because um, as an actor, you just have to be loose if you're super tense you're emotionally unavailable and um, you're just thinking about yourself. So just being relaxed um, is really important for me. And then I go just in, into improvisation as a warm up too. So it's our little plug for our social media starting a week from Monday, every Monday, we're gonna have acting warm ups. So anybody who goes on our Instagram or our Twitter, there'll be an acting warm up of the week that you can play with. Um, so um, there's, Real, I think we do two quick questions on directing in one. So there's one question from Michelle, what's the hard, I think it's what's the hardest thing about directing, what's the biggest challenge? And then Trishel is asking for directing, how do you come up with compelling ideas that would draw the audience's attention to keep them intrigued about what you're trying to portray and also keep them the edge of their seat? So for, I think for a lot of people, this isn't for me personally, but I think for a lot of people as a director, the hard, one of the big challenges is to trust your actors enough to tell the story and to just let go of control. So you do have to prepare extensively in the kind of preparation that you saw tonight and you heard about from the actors and the director it had to do with story, character, relationship, the situation, why it matters, right? Through their various techniques. Um, and then also if you're a film director, actually it's true for theater as well, you have to visually prepare extensively and that's different. There's a whole technical side, they're related, but different. So for some directors, I think it's maybe balancing those two things because they, they tend to be confident in one area or another, depending on whether they come from the technical side of filmmaking or theater or the kind of story acting writing side of film or theater. So I think balancing is hard, but I do find in training directors that trusting that the actors are actually gonna do the job for you is difficult because it requires a great deal of confidence and experience and just knowing that that will happen and then having a really good eye to just find the little things. Um, so I think it's trust. Uh, and then for the, other for all, I think the actors do it for you, really. You the other them. trust that, that is important is that everybody on the crew trusts you. So as a director, the biggest challenge is to get everybody to want to follow you, whether it's the actors or the craft service person on the set. Everybody has to believe that you care about their best interests and that you're a team. Because when you're directing a film, and I think it would be the same on theater, you're in charge of the whole team, right? And even the littlest person who's not doing their job well could disturb the biggest image. If Caleb, for instance, as an actor, wants a cup of hot tea in his trailer when he shows up, and it's not there every morning, he may leave his trailer not happy. So as the director, you have to make sure that everybody is pulling together in pursuit of one vision. And that's really the biggest challenge. And it's everything Melissa said, because if somebody thinks you're ignoring one of their things, whether it's camera or talent or hair and makeup, they're not gonna be happy. So it's, it's really getting everybody to believe in you. That, that's really the biggest thing a director can do. Because then if you have great actors and you're not so strong with acting, 
they'll give you great performances. Right. If you're a great cinematographer and you want to spend all of your time, as a director, I prefer to spend most of my time with the actors and rely on my cinematographer. They've got to believe that I still care about what their job is. So it really is that sort of leadership skill um, that's really important for directors. Right, and I think we can quickly answer one of these questions just hopping off of that, which is, you know, feeling bad as a director about asking actors to make changes. I would change your mindset on that because you're giving actors an opportunity to play in a different way. I mean, that really, I think, is why most of us get up in the morning is that it's fun to play. That's why we do this. And so I think if you are respectful of the actors and you really know the story and are willing, like Tracy said, to uh, be open to different possibilities for the story, you're just like, hey, let's try this, right? You're not, I, I think when people get locked into like authority battles on either end, the director or the actors, that's when it becomes very unfun very quickly. But if you're just like looking for different elements of the story, like I might ask Laura or Caleb to try something that we end up doing a completely different you know, we use a completely different take, but there's something from that take, a line or a look or whatever that ends up making it to the final cut. So it's good that we did that, right? So you have to be willing to like fail, <laughs> make mistakes, you know, do things that are kind of weird and crazy. As long as you, I think, are respecting the actors in the story and trying to have fun, it's, it's probably fine. So let's ask the actors, what's the most frustrating thing a director can do to you? Make it bigger, make, go bigger. <laughs> That is, that is such a general, like, what, what, what do I need to make bigger? Um, that, that, those are the really annoying. That, that, those are the most annoying types of, of notes. Because um, it's, it's not specific. And I don't know what you're talking about. And, you know, yeah. Can you just because, do that because, again, Caleb, but like a little smaller? <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Laura? Um, when they try to tell me how to feel, you know, when they're like, instead of giving an action, they're just being like, no, you feel guilty here. And I kind of generalize it for me. And I'm like, well, now it's going to be really bad <laughs> because you're telling me how to feel. <laughs> it's not going to be natural anymore. That answers a question in, in the chat about guiding actors. So, I mean, one of the challenges is to not tell Natalie, you don't tell. Um, and I think you also need to be open to maybe the fact that what the actor is actually going to feel or how they're going to behave, because you don't really know how they, what they feel inside, but it's just, it's how they behave. Maybe different than what you expected and quite often, as Tracy said, is much better than anything that you could have imagined. But if I really, really needed to guide, let's say, Laura somewhere, I would, I'm just gonna, I think it was like winding someone up or, and I try to pay attention to the actor way before I have to tell them something like that to see what turns them on and what turns them off. And I'm just kind of like noting that. So let's pretend that, you know, Laura, I, I observed making this up, really likes images. Then I might say to her, you know, she's like a deer, right? You, you've got to get her tested before she'll come to you. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to describe emotions and then Laura can interpret that how she wants. So that's more like I would guide with, with an image, for example, or I might guide with, sometimes I'll give the actor the mantra. So I'll just might walk Laura to the corner of the set and just say like, wow, in that part of the scene, he is really being an ass and then walk away. I don't tell her how she feels about him. She can decide. I just like sort of pointed something out in a really loose way. So that's how I would guide, Natalie. So I just want to answer a little bit about the shyness question that a lot of people have come up with. I'd say some of the very biggest movie stars on the planet Earth are the shyest human beings you'll ever meet. And the reason that they act is because they're somebody else. And as long as they're somebody else, they're perfectly comfortable. But the minute they have to be themselves, and Laura, you want to say a little bit about this, Laura? Because I saw you nodding. Um, yeah, for me, it's not shyness, but for me, it's I'm a highly sensitive person, so I, I, I'm very sensory aware. 
So acting is actually really challenging for me because I have to focus so hard and I can tell when people are, you know, looking at me or they're judging me and there's this tendency to think about yourself. But as soon as you start just focusing on the other person and what the story is about and what you want from them and your ideal outcome, then it goes away because you're not thinking about yourself. So you're just putting that energy away from you. And that usually helps me. I am. Um, I had the privilege of being on a set that Laura was playing a person who found that the tire from her bicycle that she parked there was gone. And she had a really intense reaction to that, that I had to actually pull back because the word fuck came out of her mouth about 30 times in 20 seconds. Um, so the question somebody was asking was, how do you prepare for a crying scene? So I guess the, the, the reason I brought that up was because that was an angry scene. So how do you guys prepare for either side of that, angry or intensely sad? What do you do? Make it extremely personal um, and pick, I had a teacher who called it, um, like putting little bombs and like emotional bombs on different lines that lead up to the crying part so that you paint a picture in your mind of what is happening and how does it affect you. And then eventually just kind of comes. And I think it also is just a lot about just making the everything super personal. It's not just about, it's not, it's not about, it's never about the lines but being very clear on who you're talking to, why you're talking to them and what you want from them and just digging deep, I guess, and staying focused and use music. I use music a lot. Yeah, I music, music really helps me a lot too. If I, this is weird. When, <clears throat> when I am about to do a scene, of, uh, I just think of something very, very personal to me that would destroy me, like having to say the eulogy at my mother's funeral and kind of trying to imagine what it would be like and say the words in my head and use that as a prep, but then throw it away. Throw that completely away and put all of that onto the scene that I'm actually doing, if that makes sense. But using something like that, intensely, intensely personalizing something to the point where you're emotionally worked up already and you're ready to go and do the scene and forget about everything that you just did and put all, all of that emotional energy that you have into the scene. How many times can you do it? <laughs> um, you know, sometimes it happens and sometimes it doesn't. Um, it's, there's, you can't, I, I mean, more often than not it will, but I would say probably I can do it more than two or three times. I would be done. <laughs> Ronnie asked a good question. How do you feel when a director, when a writer writes a lot of emotions in the script? How do you as an actor feel? Um, um, that's an interesting question. I, a lot of emotion as in, uh, well, <clears throat> there's a certain thing that I, I don't think that screenwriters are, will be very happy with is a lot of times when uh, you you put stuff in like <laughs> angrily they say it angrily or they say it happily or we just, we just cross that out and we do our own thing um so it's it, it, the emotion will come itself from the given situation um and it's about each individual actor and what they're bringing to it that that brings that energy um so just because a screenwriter says you have to be sad here now does not mean that the actor has to go by that, by the script. And Laura? <clears throat> um, yeah, similar. I mean, um, <laughs> pretty much was uh, what Caleb was, was just saying. I don't think I have anything <laughs> to add on to it. I think um, we also don't just feel one emotion at a time as humans. So as soon as you see like in a script, um, this is what the character is feeling or they say it happily, there's no such thing. Like we as humans don't just feel one emotion at a time. There's so much more going on. 
So crossing it out and just ignoring it. Those are suggestions, I guess, my, some of our teachers say. So just go with whatever suits you best. And if it ends up distracting you, then just don't think about it and experiment with something else. So there's a two part question, I think, which is how do you memorize your lines and how long does it take you to get comfortable with the scene? I'm never um, the scene. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never comfortable. With the scene. We're all just like, uh. <laughs> uh, I don't think you, I, I mean, I don't ever get, if I'm comfortable while I'm acting, I, there's, I'm not doing it right. Um, uh, but, um, uh, I'm sorry, what was it? How, how do you get comfortable? What was the first question, Jan? How do you memorize your lines? How do you memorize your lines? That is my, uh, uh, to be honest, you guys, that is my least, I hate memorizing lines. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. Um, it it's just, I have to get up on my feet and take the script and walk around and, just live with it while I'm living my life and doing normal things like washing the dishes. I'll, I'll practice lines or, you know, cleaning up or what have you, but I can't just, it's really hard for me to just sit down and memorize lines. Um, it, it, it's, it's not fun. It's not the fun part for me, but uh, I usually get it probably if I work on it for a couple, you know, hours for two or three days. Laura? Um, I do improv. <laughs> I do um, Lena's way. So what I do is I, I get the script and I read it. And then um, I improv. First, I try to figure out what the scene is about. And then usually when I figure that out, it's easier for me to understand why the character is saying what they're saying. So I start improvising one line, saying sub the subtext. And then on top of that, I say the actual line, pretty much what we did with Tracy um, if, like 30 minutes ago. And I do it on my feet and I imagine talking to the person. So I don't just sit on at my desk and write them down because then I'm kind of like a robot and I will repeatedly say the lines the same way I've memorized them, but I want them to be fresh every take. So I try to be on my feet and um, imagine touching the person in different ways. Like I'm slapping them or am I, am I caressing them? Am I kissing them? So that makes a huge difference for me. And then it usually, it goes super quickly when you do it that way, at least for me, everyone's different. So um, I'll answer the question about how you become a good director, which is about how you become a good anything. Practice, 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 practice. None of us are good at the beginning. None of us are really thinking we're that good at the end. I mean, that's what Caleb said. He doesn't want to be comfortable with the scene. I'm writing a movie right now and I'm not comfortable with it, right? So you're never comfortable with it. You just get better at the discomfort. Um, that, that's, it's all about doing it over and over and over again and being lucky enough to be able to do it over and over and over again. So if anybody um, has other questions, you've seen the 400 ways to reach me. Um, I wanna really, really thank our actors who are such fine actors and gave us such a wonderful show of how you can change in the moment, which wasn't really easy. Um, and I want to thank you all, um, Vanessa, I'll stay after the actors leave and answer your questions. Um, so thank you all very much. Anybody, Vanessa had a question. You can all stay or you can all go. <laughs>